movement is being made on Tesla's Project Roadrunner, which is essentially them redesigning the cell, and we're pretty confident this is gonna happen because Elon tweeted about Battery Investor Day, saying that they will tour battery cell production, so if there is going to be a Battery Investor Day and they wanna talk about cell production, I don't think it's because it's the same cells as before. So, using the technology they've acquired from Maxwell, the dry electrodes, and implementing them into a million mile battery pack that should be able to scale to an extent that batteries can be made cheaper than they are currently, but also last a whole lot longer, potentially even allow better range. Well, apparently the first stage of this Project Roadrunner production is going to be taking place not far from Fremont on these buildings along Cato Road, which Tesla has applied permits for for them to expand. They're going to be adding another floor to the facility. This is a building that used to be part of Solar City when Tesla acquired them. Obviously, they took ownership of these buildings, and now the permits allow Tesla to run hundreds of employees a day to be working at this facility that's being branded as a place for batteries to be built and all of the equipment that would be moving in here all looks like battery supplies so it's very clearly a new facility that Tesla's already working on and people who are touring the facility recently have already started snapping some photos showcasing that the building is already being worked on and hopefully the facility is up and running and ready to begin production as soon as Battery Investor Day takes place but at this point feels like Battery Investor Day might even get delayed further just so that they can showcase the cell production here but honestly I really hope they don't because I'm just sick of waiting for battery investor day so we can actually have it and just be done with the timelines be done with the speculation and just know exactly what's coming next but obviously these new facilities that are going to be constructing the next generation battery packs are not that big and they're probably not going to be producing enough battery packs for you know all of Tesla's lineup between the three the Y and later the Cybertruck the semi entering production and that kind of thing so a lot of people have been speculating that that must mean that this is going into low volume vehicles first and the most natural step that makes sense which is what a lot of people are assuming it's going to be is the first generation of the plaid powertrain in the model s because this is going to be a higher priced vehicle very high performance great range but at the same time you know not something everybody's going to be buying like a model 3 or y it would make sense to implement these new generation cells into the model s so that for one because you're going to have insane performance with that tri motor setup you're going to want to make sure your batteries can last a long long time so if you're going to be designing a next generation battery pack i guess it makes sense to put it into the high price vehicle first and then once these early stage batteries are being built for the model s and maybe the model x later or perhaps other low volume vehicles like the tesla roadster that could get the next generation battery packs as well but since roadster is a few years away it's obviously not a huge priority right now but it's making a lot of people think that the cybertruck factory which more than likely is going to be in Texas. They're already having town hall meetings about the Texas factory, and Tesla's been scouting around for a centrally based new Gigafactory location anyway. At that factory, they would likely start scaling mass production of these new generation battery packs, and those would be making their way into, of course, the Cybertruck. Elon has also referenced the fact that the new Texas factory would be building Model Ys for the East Coast as well, but I'm not exactly sure what that means for all of the Model 3s and Model Ys being built at the Fremont factory. Obviously, finding out that the first generation of the Project Roadrunner battery cells will only be available in, you know, the extreme high price luxury Teslas is kind of bumming me out because I was hoping that we could get them across all of Tesla's cars before the end of this year, but it sounds like it might be a little bit more complicated than that. So it's possible that, you know, there's some expansion going on at Giga Nevada right now. They've had good luck with Panasonic. So if they're able to implement some new battery chemistry at Giga Nevada and expand the size of that factory to its originally delivered promise, then maybe Maybe those are where the Model 3 and Model Y redesigned and updated battery packs are going to be built, but that does mean that they're likely not going to be making their way into cheap Teslas for another year or two. Again, it's really hard to know the timeline because we haven't had Battery Investor Day yet. So obviously Tesla wants to avoid the Osborne effect and prevent people from holding off on buying a car if they find out a next generation battery pack that won't have as much degradation, could provide longer range, or potentially even cheaper price points. A lot of people might want to hold off from buying a car if they hear that that's just around the corner, but with these more recent reports of them wanting to build their new cells in these smaller locations that will probably only be built for the higher priced vehicles, then that could kind of avoid the Osborne effect, but it just kind of delays the issue because once we get closer to the point of Tesla producing these next generation batteries for the cheaper cars, then people are going to want to hold off when they hear that's coming up too. So let me know how you guys think this is going to run. I'm still very confused, but it's interesting to see that they're expanding their battery production because 
as Tesla is hoping to grow and hoping to increase their deliveries by 50% each year, they definitely need to buy as many locations as they can and dedicate them all to building more battery packs. Because you've heard me say it a million times, anytime we talk about a next generation Tesla or what Tesla should do next, we're always stumped by the whole, but battery production, that's the main constraint right now. Battery production is the only reason the Tesla Semi is not on city streets yet, that and mega chargers. But either way, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on Project Roadrunner as well. Feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, join my Discord, and we can chat more about it there. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.